The ultimate breakdown of the new, potentially super woke Fallout TV show that willingly chooses to ignore established lore and make stuff up as it goes. I don't know about you, but I'm already wet. Hello there. I'm here to show you a wonderful place. The new trailer for the Fallout TV show opens up with Cooper Howard, aka The Ghoul, standing in front of Vault 4. This character is played by Walton Goggins, and to a certain degree it almost feels like The Ghoul and Cooper Howard are two separate characters. The Ghoul is one of the main protagonists of this show, but it's now been several hundred years since he was in his human form as Cooper Howard. But we do know that he was an actor in westerns and even a vault Tech spokesperson. He I have to say one thing. I don't think this show is going to be a huge success. I'll be honestly surprised if it's even a decent success as far as what we have so seen so far. But I will say this. This is, this is just peak perfection in a certain way, okay? When I imagine a Vault Tech spokesperson especially, this just nails it perfectly in my opinion. It's like you're looking at a human, but how to describe it best? It's a human, you know it's a human, but it feels like this person has taken a step back from humanity. And I do think to a certain degree that perfectly encapsulates what you would think of vault Tech uh, as a whole. And I think he perfectly represents what it would be to be a vault Tech spokesperson or something like that. This is beautiful, though. Here, we are seemingly seeing one of his presentations in front of the never-before-seen Vault 4. This was first introduced by this trailer, and it seems pretty likely that this will be a demo vault used to get people to sign up. A bit later into the trailer, we get to see one of his ads he created for Vault Tech playing on an old-timey TV, seemingly inside of a vault somewhere. We then have a scene of a bunch of vault dwellers setting up for some kind of ceremony. The shot's really interesting, and maybe a bit of an insight into what's going on with this particular vault. We have this projection of farmland in the background, with a camera reading telesonic magic of 3D. So they're effectively simulating that outside world feel from inside the vault, which perhaps is one of the experiments going on in Vault 33. And one of the biggest standouts from some of these vault shots is just how insanely accurate this is. If you played a Fallout game recently, you probably recognize that, but if you actually jump back into Fallout 4 right now, you'll realize that no, this is like point for point perfect. So many of even the minor details are spot on to Yeah, that is true. The vault seems spot on. But sadly, that's all that seems spot on, honestly. Fallout 4, even down to the side support pieces looking pretty much identical to what we have in game, including the accurate triangle bolts. I actually think that's not the most impressive part here. If you look at the walls right here, you can see that it's bricks, some kind of uh, some kind of brick laying, right? It's not just a, a, a full wall, but it's made from bricks. And you can see the seams going horizontally but you can see slightly vertical seams here and you can also see it here i think that's pretty good to call to what we have in game including the accurate triangle bolts all throughout this trailer you'll notice a clear passion from those that are creating these sets and props for this show we then cut to a closer look at the ceremony setup and one of the interesting parts is all of these crops are really here it seems like this may genuinely be the vault dweller's food supplies and this guy waving is the vault 33 overseer and also lucy's dad lucy is the other main protagonist of the fallout tv show played by ella purnell and if I don't know much about Ella Parnell, but I hope she's actually hot at least. Everyone here seems surprisingly happy. Like I mentioned before, lots of vaults have these experiments, and many are dark and absolutely horrific. It seems like in Vault 33, either it's a control vault with no experiment going on, or the experiment's not that bad because a lot of these inhabitants just seem to genuinely be enjoying what they're doing. Although that enjoyment is definitely short-lived. Yeah. Much later on in the trailer, we cut back to the same scene in absolute chaos. Lucy's dad looks quite distressed, and it seems likely that this was a wedding of some kind. We see someone running out in a white dress, and many of the vault dwellers now dead or unconscious. In the last trailer, we saw several shots of vault dwellers going crazy, and I have to imagine that is what's occurring here. We're seeing the aftermath of this destruction and back. Uh, one thing that's probably noticeable about this is the fact that I think they're poisoned. It seems more likely that they're poisoned, not just gunned down or anything like that, because it does seem like this TV show is not going to shy away from blood. 
Which is hilarious, considering Bethesda has shied away from any gore and blood, you know, for like at least 15 years at this point. Battle. Although what actually caused this chaos is still totally unknown. Perhaps that's the real vault experiment. And even this jukebox off to the side seems to be the same jukebox that ends up getting splattered. We then cut to this outside panning shot. We've seen this in other trailers, but it's a pretty important one. This is Santa Monica Pier in California. And very notably, we could see the entrance to Vault 33 right off to the side here. But what to me was easily one of the most interesting of the shot shared in this new trailer is this one of the Shady Sands Public Library and very notably a giant crater right next to it. Shady Sands is a huge location in both Fallout 1 and 2. In Fallout 1, it's really the first major settlement you go to after you leave the vault for the first time. But perhaps more relevant to the TV show, this grew into a full-on NCR town for Fallout 2, and it was the NCR's main city in Fallout 2. So is this shot suggesting that one of the NCR's main towns is now a giant crater, or is this just a crater that happens to be near shady sands the last time we there is a possibility that uh the lord of the couriers is al also at least hinted on in the tv shows which would be pretty interesting see the ncr in the video game they have a major presence in california but by the time of the show we're barely seeing them only just one battle scene that we'll talk about a little bit later but at the very least it looks like we're going to be getting an explanation on whatever happened we get our first proper look at lucy a seemingly innocent vault 33 dweller that is thrust into the waste for an apparent rescue mission at least that's what we've heard from past interviews and from what we've seen thus far it really seems like a lot of this story is going to be explained from her perspective. She's that vault dweller going into the wasteland for the first It this makes perfect sense because she is the only character that actually has the ability to ask questions. What is this? Why is it happening? Bile caps. You know, it's the only character that makes sense that you know we can get a perspective from of the world at least. Now I'm sure Bethesda then Netflix obviously is gonna come well and actually Amazon. Netflix, Amazon, they're both garbage dumpster fires, who gives a shit? Okay, they're interchangeable. But you know, at least it, I, they're gonna probably screw this up and we're probably gonna have a situation where we go to a place and then characters that have lived there for all eternity start to give a a lore dump about aha, this is a city blah, 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 blah. it's gonna be bad. So, there, it's not bad that we get the perspective of the world from her, because she can actually explain things and ask questions, and maybe they, for, in some miracle, actually, you know, make it make sense that it's not just all of lot exposition, but she asks questions and we get decent explanations about why things are the way they are outside. First time, basically what we do in many of the games. So it's very likely we'll be seeing the wasteland through her eyes and interpreting many of the events based off how she interprets them. In this voiceover, she mentions coming to the surface to restart civilization, suggesting that she is fully bought into those rose-tinted glass vault ideals. But then we cut to a later shot of Lucy fully out of the vault and walking into a shop. And this exchange with the shopkeeper is really interesting. The shopkeeper is both shocked to be seeing a vault dweller, but also immediately doesn't like Lucy and vault dwellers in general. So in the Fallout TV show, vault dwellers will not only be a rarity, but the broader world has opinions and perceptions on them. That's one of those things we've only seen a little- Makes sense, by the way. This is something that makes complete sense. I don't know how they're gonna handle it, but it makes sense from the perspective of this. Uh, vaults are these magical places that a select few people had the opportunity to survive the apocalypse, not struggle with food, not struggle with water, not struggle with anything. So it's kind of understandable that people outside of faults kind of detest them. But what doesn't make sense is the fact that she's a vault dweller and they just, you know, uh, don't knock her by the head and then ask questions or things like that. Be that doesn't make sense. But the fact that people don't like wall dwellers, that makes, that does make sense. A little bit of in the games, and it looks like they'll be exploring it a bit more in the TV show. And around this shop, there are a lot of really cool props. We can see what almost looks like a Cazador wing sitting right here next to some stim packs and a bobblehead, mm, but also true. several familiar weapons on this wall, a plasma pistol, lever action rifle, machete, and some other stuff I can't really make out. Overall in this trailer, there are quite a few panning shots of Lucy just exploring around. This honestly looks pretty aimless and like she wasn't prepared to see all of this or doesn't have a destination in mind. We hear this character inside the vault trying 
to warn her before leaving, and overall it seems like they are really painting a picture of this naive vault dweller going out into the wasteland, very likely trying to show her evolution into a proper wastelander over the course of the story, which of course is- That's wishful thinking for, you know, any uh, uh, Amazon. Yeah, there, there's not gonna be a lot of character evolution, I think, here. It's gonna be instantaneously uh, adapted to the new way of life and all, all of that good stuff. Is a parallel to what we experience as we go through the games. But then perhaps one of the most revealing shots for the overarching story, we then cut to Lucy holding a head. I'm not entirely sure whose head this is or why looks Lucy like is carrying it, but it maybe? looks relatively early. We still see Lucy in her vault get up and she's on her own. We know that the three main protagonists do come together at some point, but that hasn't happened yet. In the last trailer, we see Lucy getting scared of tumbleweeds, but now we see her comfortable carrying a severed head. It seems like quite the extreme just- It looks like some kind of of mutant not a super mutant actually but you know doesn't seem that human ish admittedly it has hair and I imagine we're going to see Lucy get a real raw treatment from the wasteland. The predominant speculation online right now is this is the Red Man's head, otherwise known as Wilzig. It's the character from the last trailer that had the red glowing light on their face that showed up with the dog. And he pops up in this trailer. Well, yeah, uh, you, you never... Tr <laughs> You never trust him. He was in Lost. He's the bad guy in everything, okay? Uh, uh our boy Ben is just an absolute beast, okay? A couple of times as well, later in Philly, but most notably, we also get a quick shot of him injecting something into his neck slash head. This is where a lot of the speculation stemming from. It seems likely that whatever this is being injected, we actually get a closer up shot of whatever it is in the Japanese version of the trailer, but whatever that is, is the important thing in why Lucy's carrying around a head. And she may be doing this for a while. Later on in this trailer, we can see Lucy has a bag with bag, her. What yeah. a lot of you have noticed and actually sent to me is in many of the pieces of character art around Lucy, the same bag can be seen with some blood on it. It does kind of look like a bag that would fit a head, so perhaps for a decent chunk of the series, Lucy's carrying around a head in this bag. And this all could tie together in an interesting way. Later on, we see Lucy finds a bottle of some kind of poison that reads vault Tech Plan something, it almost looks like vault Tech Plan B, named Econo Savings Pack, and you can't make out the rest <laughs> of the word. This scene makes me think nice. that perhaps one of the plot lines is uncovering some of the cruel experimentation that goes on. We saw this guy with one eye, and I just assume this is some kind of vault Tech this. experiment. And Lucy seems like the perfect character to uncover some of the darkness of vault Tech. From this trailer, it really seems like Lucy believes in the core ideals of vault Tech. So her gradually uncovering that in reality, they're a very messed up organization would be a pretty interesting plot point for the show. I imagine this bottle of poison is likely going to be connected to one of those experiments, and it's why she's having this crude reaction. We don't know much about who Wilzig is or isn't, but here it definitely looks like he's wearing a lab coat, but maybe he is a scientist related to all of this somehow. Hollywood Boulevard's that iconic street with the- Well, if there's a plot, it does make sense, okay? If there is an overarching plot about her understanding that Valtek is not actually all, all sunshine and roses, Valtek's a bunch of retards, actually. No, none of their experiments make sense. They're all bad. I think I think the reason that Fallout, uh, Fallout actually succeeds as a game, as a story-driven game, in fact, is because Bethesda is horrible at writing. They try to make a super serious uh, dark game. And, well, it's more like a comedy, as we all know, but it kind of worked out walk of fame stars so seeing this flooded out is meant to reflect just how far gone society is at this point this is the scene where lucy finally has the bag but also very notably she walks up with her hand on her weapon this likely reflecting some of the very quick character growth she has had to go through and this seems confirmed in the next scene as we do see her injured on her arm we then immediately cut to the characters finally interacting as we see the ghoul putting lucy at gunpoint the ghoul is wielding a new weapon for the fallout franchise here with the mts 255 this era revolver shotgun and funny enough it's actually a very popular mod already for fallout 4 and a pretty interesting choice mm. for the ghoul as this is a communist weapon the mts 255 was developed by russia in real life the ghoul seems to reek of americana especially as he was cooper howard in a past life so perhaps him using a russian shotgun is a clue at something or perhaps i'm just reading way too deeply into this we could also see he has a variety of shell types at his disposal and we'll get to see him use a couple of these in a moment lucy's notably more injured here her vault suit is 
torn and her arm is clearly hurt. And I think this is a clue that this is one of the later scenes we've seen of the show. If you look, many of the times we see Lucy, her vault suit is not damaged. All of these scenes in Philly, as well as many others, have her arm totally fine. And in the Japanese version of the trailer, there's some extra scenes that may fit in around all of this. We can see Lucy is on the run with her hands bound and even missing a shoe. In the next shot, someone lassos her and I suspect this is the ghoul, because of course he used to play probably. in westerns, so he probably knows how to use a lasso. We then cut to a later scene where Lucy's barely wearing her vault suit anymore, and she mentions how- That's character progression that I want to see, honestly. I'm completely fine with that. I'm down, boy. Everyone she's encountered this week has tried to kill her. It really does seem to suggest that a big part of the show, at least early on, is going to be us seeing Lucy go through it. If this trailer is anything to go off of, she's getting the majority of the screen time, and a lot of bad stuff seems to be happening to her. Such as in the kitty Playland, Lucy comes up against a very accurate looking Mr. Handy, who intends to harvest her organs and hits her with a syringe shot. There are a ton of really cool details in this scene though. The Mr. Handy, of course, looks amazing, but a lot of these medical supplies off to the side are also spot on. On the shelf, we could see antibiotics, Rad X, and maybe even some buff out, and Lucy has her own set of new injuries mm. here. She's covered in blood and her finger is yeah, her finger looks like it's gonna go bye-bye. Now blue, it looks like circulation was cut off, or maybe she has a serious cut there. And here again, she is missing a shoe, which honestly seems absolutely disastrous in the wasteland. And more is to come, because at this point, she doesn't even have her arm injury yet. But things get even worse here, as this Mr. Handy does seem to get pretty close to operating on Lucy. I do wonder what ends up saving her. We get a few more shots from inside the vault, and once again, let me just highlight how insanely accurate this hallway is to fall out hot for like it is a near perfect recreation but we have this image of the pregnant woman and lucy wrenching around but it almost looks like this is fake like they're doing a photo op as opposed to actually being on maintenance duty what is the pregnant woman even using the yeah kind of true actually seems does it does seem off the wrench on it doesn't look like it would fit maybe this is some kind of flashback or whatever on anything even remotely near her but what many of you may not realize it is a woman though what? I have actually seen women pull this shit off in real life or similar type of stuff. Okay? This is... This is not make-believe. This is literally belief. As is, you probably already know this woman. This is the same lady who gets the fork in her eye and is blasting people oh. away with her SMG. We learned in a past interview that this guy is Lucy's brother. I imagine this scene's right before she exits the vault, and it seems like she's exiting- Snap his neck, Lucy. Snap his neck. In the vault under duress to some degree. In other shots, we've seen other people come up and someone's even laying on the ground as she leaves. But her brother does seem to stay behind. It almost looks like Lucy's coming comforting her brother as she grabs his head here. I wouldn't be shocked if we get some wasteland adventures from Lucy, but periodically are cutting back to her brother's perspective inside the vault to see whatever's going on there. But then finally we get a look at the third major protagonist with Maximus, played by Aaron Moten. Maximus is a part of the Brotherhood of Steel, and they are looking pretty healthy here. One of the big unknowns in the Fallout TV show, like I mentioned before, is what I- Oh, okay, raise your hands if you're absolutely just- Completely not down with the idea that Bethesda's push pushing the Brotherhood of Steel as like a main thing You know that they're good guys. They're all about that good stuff. No, 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 no The Brotherhood of Steel will never for me be anything else as just kind of cha chaotic neutral If you have a laser rifle, congratulations uh, Give it to us. No Boop that's it, taking it, boop, 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 boop. No hesitation or anything. That's the Brotherhood of Steel. They're not the good guys. They're not, they're, they will never just randomly help someone in need. They will just take stuff from you if you have something they want. The Brotherhood of Steel is not these good guys that now Bethesda is pushing at the front side of, you know, uh, of the series as, you know, the Boy Scout type of thing. I don't like this. Actually, have I want an actual deep and complex Brotherhood of Steel that has its goals, has its expl explained reasoning that actually is decent for why they do what they do, why they believe what they do, not the good Boy Scouts that are gonna save the world. That's boring, that's stupid, that's lame. This is why Fallout New Vegas was the best Fallout and probably always will be because it actually showed two sides of the conflict and then a third one that were diametrically opposed against each other, which was great. 
and they didn't even have the Brotherhood of Steel. Well, they did, but, you know, they didn't play a major role. ...happened with the Brotherhood. The last we see, they're at war with the NCR, and the Brotherhood are largely hiding and forced underground. Clearly here, they aren't hiding any longer. One of the interesting parts about this scene is what the Brotherhood are wearing. It looks like many of them are sporting holotags, just like what we have in the game. And as we do cut to the power armor shot, we can see both the power armor and assault rifle are perfectly accurate to the video game. It's honestly insane how- And they're perfectly stupid and completely useless as real weapons. Nice. Close this all is. Which is what makes it a bit more interesting that basically none of these Brotherhood outfits are accurate to the game. Some, like Maximus's outfit here, do share a similar DNA, but they're clearly quite different. We know the Brotherhood of Steel in the TV show will have this new airship known as the Kasawanan. It of course looks almost identical to the Pridwin, but we don't really know how or why it came to be. But with all this in mind, and how accurate some parts of the show are, but then we clearly see the Brotherhood here having a bit of a different style, I have to wonder if this was just a deliberate choice, to have the Brotherhood to steal here have a bit of their own identity and perhaps some of that is distinct looking clothing. I mean if anything this dude's outfit looks far more comparable to an enclave officer uniform we've seen from past games Hell as opposed yeah. to anything the Brotherhood used. Based on the timing and sequence of these scenes it seems like this is a flashback where we see a young Maximus interacting with a Brotherhood knight perhaps for the first time. This cut is in the exact same location as the scar on Maximus's face and it almost looks like Maximus here is in a vertebrate. We hear how he joined the Brotherhood of Steel to hurt the people who hurt him. And based off the number of scars he has, it definitely Good. seems like he's been through it as well. But as we cut to him in his own suit of armor, he looks cold and like he's ready to deliver vengeance. Through all Good. of the marketing material, we have seen this scratch on the power armor that Maximus is wearing. It's likely a device That's used cool. by the show to identify which of the Brotherhood Knights are Maximus when they have power armor on. And we see this power armor helmet open up Iron Man style. Of I don't think actually we're gonna see a dead claw. I think we're gonna- well, we already know that we're gonna see a Yaogwai. Of course, this isn't a thing in the games. In the games, they just take their helmet off. But honestly, I think this makes a lot of sense. From a lore perspective, being able to use power armor and actually eat things is important. But even further, from a TV show perspective, being able to actually film an actor's face easily without them having to remove their entire helmet just makes a ton of sense. But one of the other big questions I have around the Fallout TV show is what on earth is going on with dog meat or just this dog? As of right now, I'm not entirely sure the dog's name even is dog meat. The first time we see the dog, he's around Wilzig. Lucy's right across from them and it seems like dog meat's taking out a rad roach but now we find him partnering up with the ghoul and it appears like this is where he ends up staying because he does appear in the character art with the ghoul so are there multiple dogs here did this dog change teams off to the side it looks like we do have slocum's joe which is another cool little detail we then cut to what appears to be more footage in philly this is that town that we get a pretty extensive look at in the last trailer we can see will zig the shopkeeper and lucy all together and seemingly in a standoff with the ghoul it's not really clear what this little bottle that the ghoul is holding is. At first glance, it almost looked like a partially used Radex, but that wouldn't make sense because he's a ghoul, he's already immune to radiation. But from the looks of things, these parties are at odds. Even before combat breaks out, everyone in Philly is already staring at the ghoul, who then absolutely massacres a passerby. He creates nice. a rather large hole in that person with whatever type of ammo he is using, perhaps some kind of explosive ammo based off some of those unique slugs he had on his bandolier. And if some of those shots from the previous trailer didn't make it clear enough, it very much so seems like the ghoul can handle himself. It appears he takes out most of the town in this one scene, and here we can see he has even incapacitated the shopkeeper as well as Wilzig. Bro, that's me after Megaton became a little bit redundant. In fact, it looks like Wilzig has lost his foot entirely in the conflict. Lucy ends up shooting the ghoul, who is totally unaffected by her syringe round. We've seen Lucy's weapon in the past, and it too is a new addition to Fallout. The ghoul has this cute line about drugs not really impacting him, and I'm curious as to why. Seemingly, this should work, but perhaps there is some deeper lore or story here. We have heard how the ghoul's unusual appearance, even for a ghoul, will be explained, and perhaps this is all connected. Maybe he is some kind of special ghoul, and that's why this syringe round also does nothing. And I also suspect that's where this special juice comes in into play. He's toying with it here, but in later scenes we can see him really salivating over whatever it is he just consumed from this little bottle. Perhaps this is just enhancing his abilities. Well, he literally just, in this scene right here, said that's a very small drop, a drop in a very large bucket of drugs. I don't know about you, but I kind of think he's addicted, he's probably a chem addict, there you go. I mean, that's not a hard thing to figure out, in my opinion. He's a ghoul. He 
He's a disgusting freak of nature, which makes Don Clave right, by the way. Don Clave are the good guys, by the way. Hey, if I was thrust in a situation like this and I, I had the choice of, hmm, either try to make a settlement and die, or purify the water so, you know, the few, uh, the world can start over again. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm joining the Enclave, boys. ...in some way, or maybe it's doing a bit more. I think there is an interesting commentary on both of these characters going on here, though, with what weapons they're using. Lucy is this idealistic vault dweller who's firing syringe rounds. And while, yeah, you can have poisonous syringe rounds, they also can just be used to knock out individuals instead of killing them outright. Conversely, the battle-hardened ghoul, who lost his family, uses this sawed-off shotgun with rounds that are literally blowing holes in people. Considering they're two very prominent characters and using two completely new weapons for the show, I have a feeling that this is all actually meaning something. But none of this may matter, because I may end up boycotting the Fallout TV show anyway, because if you look, you could see a very not okay looking dog. I presume this is the ghoul's dog, uh -oh. and if somebody attacked it, I totally understand why That's he bad. massacred the entire town. Perhaps the Fallout TV show is really just John Wick post-apocalyptic version. It does look like the dog's would be good. Its ears twitching here, so maybe the dog is still alive. But I'm going to need some answers ASAP from Prime Video, because this is just not okay. Although Although there True. actually is some hope a bit later in the trailer, we'll return to the dog, don't worry. We then cut to a scene with Maximus charging the ghoul in his set of scratched up power armor right in the center of Philly. This seems to suggest that all three of the characters are going to be in Philly at some point, but then there's also going to be later points where they'll meet up again. So seemingly our three main protagonists interact several times before actually joining up. Although directly after Philly, we do see a bunch of scenes of Lucy and Maximus teaming up, although Maximus no longer has his power armor. Later on in the trailer, we have this panning shot of someone in power armor, probably Maximus, reacting to this creature. It very much so looks like it's going to be a fallout gulper, but the fingers in the mouth and the strands in the back of the head are new, so regardless of whatever this creature is, it looks awesome and terrifying. And this flooded yeah. area definitely looks pretty similar to the Hollywood Boulevard area we saw earlier with also. Lucy and the ghoul. Immediately after the power armor shot, it cuts to Lucy and the dog on the side, and assuming dog meat is really with the ghoul at this point, this could mean we are mm. seeing one of the first scenes where where all three of the main characters are actually together in this flooded area. But also, interestingly, it seems... Well, they already are uh, together probably in the other area, because there's no way that uh, all of their uh, roads don't first cross in, this, uh, in the city here. It just makes sense. It establishes everything. It establishes their dynamic. The idealistic girl with the guy who uh, has lost... Uh, has lost... His pers not perspective, what do, uh, has lost, not his humanity, but, you know, has lost all hope for the world, essentially, versus the guy who just wants to take revenge and kill everyone who's evil, in his opinion. And they all meet, and it's the first clash of ideologies, which is kind of good. Seems like Lucy is going to be traveling with just the ghoul and just Maximus at various points. We see her and the ghoul going into a really well done super duper mart, but then at another point we see her with Maximus and really several scenes with Maximus and Lucy. Okay, by the way, my prediction for this is going to be real simple because of the crater that we can see here, right? The Brotherhood of Steel found some kind of way to nuke the NCR, and that's how... The, uh, they became the main force in the area, at least, okay? Maybe the courier had something to do with this, who knows? several scenes with Maximus and Lucy together. It really seems like Lucy is going to be the most malleable of the group just going into the wasteland for the first time, so perhaps both the ghoul and Maximus will try and apply their own ideologies onto her. This shot is also the hope for me at least that Dogmeat is in fact alive. Here we see Lucy with her arm injured again, so that does seem to confirm that this is after the Philly fight because her arm isn't injured in that scene. So unless this is another dog, there is definitely a dog later on in the show, so hopefully Dogmeat lives. Like I've been mentioning this time, we do get quite a few scenes of Maximus and Lucy that really make it seem like they are bonding on their wasteland travels. Maximus seemingly loses power armor at some point, and we do get this very game-accurate Brotherhood uniform that he's wearing, but one of my favorite details thus far that comes from this is Lucy upgrades her armor to an armored vault suit from a regular one. This likely being a reflection of her character's growth, but just a really cool detail. There weren't any armored vault suits in Fallout 4, but- I mean, if you want to call this armored, <laughs> sure, why not, honestly, but yeah. 
previous Fallout games, you did have those as an option. And even her weapons change, as Lucy's now sporting a 10mm pistol, which also looks amazing, but is considerably more lethal than a syringer. In the background of this shot, you can see the deactivated power armor, and then we have what is easily one of the coolest shots from the trailer with the Battle of the Griffith Observatory. This is a real-life location just outside of LA, and it seems like here, the Brotherhood of Steel are moving in via Vertebrae to an NCR base at the- If no one says, Verity Birdie, I'm gonna be so disappointed in this show, by the way, in general. I'm gonna be- my heart is gonna be literally broken if no one says, Verity Birdie, at no moment in time. That That's not the fallout. You know what? If Brotherhood of Steel is uh, holding a gun to my head and saying, Say, I'm not gonna hesitate, boys, okay? It's gonna be birdie birdie all night long. I'm gonna say three times before they can even pull the trigger, baby. I'm all locked in and ready to go. Griffith Observatory. So finally, we have official confirmation that yes, the NCR are in fact in the Fallout TV show, although it definitely looks like they have locked- I don't care about the NCR, okay? Dude, the, the NCR can exist, but I think it's obviously- obviously gonna be the enclave that turns out to be the actual main threat of whatever is going on at the end of the season at the midway of the season it's gonna be hinted the enclave are the real bad ones obviously and they're gonna be visibly nazis obviously because how can this be a netflix amazon tv production random MacGuffin trash in it if that doesn't happen. It can't, obviously, so there you go. Awesome power. We just haven't seen all of them in this show, and even when we do see them, they look strong, but not quite the same height they were at the times of New Vegas. Power armor in the TV show will be appropriately strong. It's tanking a ton of automatic fire from this SMG at point blank range. And the NCR here are using quite a few World War II era weapons. It looks like I was gonna talk about this, yeah, but the power armor at least seems it can handle gunfire. And power armor is literally is supposed to make you into a walking tank. So yeah, gunshots are not gonna do anything. But I wonder how they're gonna handle power armor in realism. Because you need to understand, if you are in that and a rocket hits you, the power armor is probably fine. Maybe maybe a little bit blackened because you know of the explosion and whatnot. But it's probably fine. But you are no longer 95% water. You're 100% liquid, because nothing of nothing of you is left from the shock wave. Because yeah, uh, that force still travels through you, and while the metal is metal, you are, are a slurry essentially at that point. So I wonder how they're gonna handle that. Looks like this is a Sten, similar to what we saw in some of the previous vault scenes. This looks like an STG-44, here it looks like we have a grease gun, but perhaps most exciting from the scene, it also looks like we have an NCR Ranger off to the side. It is a bit hard to make out, but I'm pretty sure this character is wearing a red visor and he- I can't see. Which one? This one? No. Nah, that's not a ranger. To the side. It is a bit hard to make out, but I'm pretty sure this character is wearing a red visor and a full suit of NCR Ranger armor. There's also a different shot of the same scene in the Japanese trailer and shows off some more Brotherhood Knights. I also don't like this attention to detail, actually. It's super horrible. Did you know this? Uh, 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 can you can you notice this one? Look. A red visor and a full suit of NCR Ranger armor. There's also a- Look here. You see this? Ah, oh, this is such poor attention to detail. If this was John Wick, and the, the attention to detail of John Wick was this, this disgustingly poor, it would be trash. Okay, look at it. Look at the picnic table. A different shot. God, that's so sad. That's so, that's so bad. That is so, so bad. At the end, there are things that look promising about this show, but there are things that look extremely poor. And... When your small details are this poor as in, as in, in this show, I think that uh, that is a significant uh, tell about, you know, how everything is going to happen in general. And again, you need to remember, trailers, all of this garbage, games, movies, TV shows, blah, blah, blah. Trailers can be faked so easily. You can literally take uh, just, you know, the most epic two, two parts of the whole series, aka this shot and maybe the town fight, and 
cobble them together, you know, five seconds a pop where something's happening. And you're going to kind of have uh, at the end something that's that looks interesting for the trailer. So I never, I don't want to judge things just by the trailer. And, you know, again, I hope for the best, but I think it's going to be the worst. And in either way, uh, we, we as an audience win. No matter what. If it's good, it's good and I'm happy. If it's bad, I'm gonna shit on it and we can have a laugh about it. Shot of the same scene in the Japanese trailer and shows off some more Brotherhood Knights with flags. And finally, somebody actually using the assault rifle in power armor. One of the pretty interesting parts about this show is most of the time we see somebody in power armor, they're fighting with their hands. They're not actually using a weapon for some reason. Of course, this is just based off a couple of minutes from a couple of trailers, but it is interesting. And the NCR runout scenes also have a lot of cool game accurate props. This laser pistol. I like the big, strong, powerful leader woman and the other one that's clearly ready for war. And this one, don't forget about the diversity high number 52 billion. ...is spot on, but also some very accurate combat armor. Even down to this character only wearing a partial set of combat armor, just like many NPCs in the game do. We get a look at the ghoul reminiscing about his old self as a western action star, but also some nice Halloween decorations in the background. In Fallout, the bombs dropped on October 27th, so many houses and stores have Halloween decorations out. But there's also mm. going to be some pre-war content. We get a look at the day the bombs dropped in California. This looks like a nice backyard somewhere. It looks like it's overlooking LA. We can see Cooper Howard running around in an outfit that seems to be matching the- It's probably his house. He most likely uh, jumped into the pool. That's why the pool is dead. Outfit worn by his daughter. Very interestingly, this outfit is also in the vault tech color scheme. Considering Cooper Howard was a movie star, I have to imagine that this house is his. Towards the end of the trailer, we get a quite a few shots from within the vault, and although these are kind of hard to place in the broader picture, they definitely are telling. We see Maximus aggressively walking through the vault, our fork eye pregnant lady making eyes with Lucy's brother, a cake, which is probably like how does this make also sense? The does the vault have like a purge day or something like that? Because it seems like they have a lot of food. And, well, let me explain you the basis of humanity. Food equals population growth. No food equals population downsizing. Very simple. So if this is a vault that makes food, maybe they have the ability to just reproduce, but other resources are limited, so they do have like the culling games at a random point in a couple of years or something like that could be like it and that would actually fit kind of the vault uh vault aesthetic to a degree i well not the aesthetic but it kind of would make sense in a uh vault tech style of experiment the culling games place in the broader picture they definitely are telling we see maximus aggressively walking through the vault our fork eye pregnant lady making eyes with lucy's brother a cake which is probably just a part of okay now that she's a semi-cyclops she's kind of hotter i'm not gonna lie boys Fourth eye pregnant is. lady making eyes with Lucy's brother, a cake, which is probably just a part of the wedding, but then something exploding as bomb visuals go off on the big projector screen in the background. There isn't really a ton to break mm. down from some of these scenes, but the larger takeaway I have is that we're going to be getting a healthy amount of in-vault content. It definitely looks like even after Lucy leaves, we'll be cutting back to the vault for updates on whatever. Nah, you need to make this hotter, okay? Her eyes, what the fuck is wrong with this? Is this some kind of... Is this some kind of strange form of fetal alcoholism syndrome or what, what, what is this? What's going on there? And one of the things to get me most excited here is it looks like we're going to have some pre-war stuff exploring Cooper Howard a bit more and likely what he lost. Yeah, obviously we're going to have that. We're going to have his backstory. I didn't I didn't mention it at the, at the start, but it's pretty obvious also to a degree why at the start... Um, Let's see. Somewhere around, you know, let's say just here. You know why he seems like a different person here? To to what he essentially uh, seems like uh, here. Healthy amount of it's on whatever's going on uh, right? there. And one of the at this point, why it seems that they're different uh, different people when he's a ghoul? Because he's a ghoul. He lost everything again. He's he's probably gonna be the doom and gloom, and there's nothing left for uh, in value in humanity. So he's just dulling his life away or something like that. 
that's gonna be his story arc. Not really hard to predict. Things to get me most excited here is it looks like we're going to have some pre-war stuff exploring Cooper Howard a bit more and likely what he lost as a part of the bombs dropping. It very much so looks like this is his wife and they are in a vault and I imagine the flashbacks will be a plot device to explain why he is so brutal now. We're going to see the terrible tragedy he went through and then get to see the reality of the new person that came out. Okay, since... the. I understand explaining the tragedies of the past so you can understand and feel for a character more, but I completely don't trust them to do this properly. I think it's gonna be a disaster. Wh which series completely butchered this shit previously? Avatar The Last Airbender was pretty shit with their uh, explanation of the past with characters. The, the most shows nowadays are so bad at explaining and uh, doing flashbacks in general, it's crazy. So I'm not putting a lot of stock in the idea that they're gonna do actually a good job to make you care about his previous life. Like, there's, there's, there's just no way, okay? The, the best they're gonna actually get with this is, I feel that it's uh, the idea that he became a drug addict because, well, he's a celebrity and all of that, so he kind of was almost on the edge of becoming that in his previous life, but now that he has a goal and he has nothing to lose, that explains why he is now uh, also a drug addict, because previously he had the integrity to not do it, but now that he lost everything, maybe then he just uh, dulls the pain or does something like that. So, that is the best they're gonna do. And I don't even think they're gonna do that. On the other side. Overall, I thought this new trailer was absolutely phenomenal. If you feel like there's anything I missed, let me know in the comments down below. But at the end of the day, we don't have long to wait now. The Fallout TV show releases in just a little over one month. And if you want- Hell yeah. And keep up to date with everything that's going on. Anyway, that was Juicehead. A pretty good analysis of everything that happened. I liked it. Very neat, very fun. A lot of Easter eggs that no one cares about and all of that good stuff. Anyway, this was Quizzer Citizen. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, and already, and have a nice day. Bye-bye.